来たかワン・ツー・スリー・ファンイエースプニープレイヤーズ、ロビット・ヒー It seems like only yesterday we learned about extreme yokai, but now it's time for another breed of SSS ranks. The big C is for Crystal. Yep, Crystal Legend yokai are here. Crystal Shogunyun was introduced recently in Busters 2, and now Crystal Legends have been introduced to Puni Puni. Crystal Shogunyun is the first Crystal Legend to be introduced, and he's here as an SSS rank. Like Extreme Yokai, Crystal Legends have a powerful second s u l t i m a t e level known as the G s u l t i m a t e In order to progress the G s u l t i m a t e you can use Extreme Soul Secrets. Crystal Shogunyun is available via the Event Gasha. Alternatively, if you place high enough in the Scramble Battle, you can also befriend him as a reward. It's the Competition Gasha, and we start the event with Raid Ups. Both Crystal Shogunyun and Nagaraja have higher drop rates currently. These two yokai have event abilities that will increase your success in a variety of ways. Time for the main event it's the Cat Yokai Bell Scramble, introducing Crystal Legends. It's quite a mouthful. In this event, the three Cat Yokai teams will compete to see who can get the most bells. The competition is divided into five periods with rewards coming at the completion of each period. Each period lasts for three days, with the final period lasting four days. Exclusive event yokai are available via the event gasha on the event map, through contribution point rewards, through scramble leaderboard rewards, and via the Y points shop. The impossible stage features the SS Awoken form of Hovernyan. When challenging the impossible stage, you can use yokai with special abilities. Naga Raja has a moderate damage down effect. Shorinji has a small damage down effect. Crystal Shogunyun provides damage up on the impossible stage. When you contribute to the victory of your team, you also earn personal contribution points. There's a leaderboard within each team for each period, and Crystal Shogunyun, Naga Raja, and more are prizes for top spots. There are three ways to gather contribution points. When battling yokai on the event map, bells will show up on the playfield that you can claim. You can also capture bells from other teams through use of the capture stages. Lastly, enemy teams may invade the stages of your map. You can earn extra contribution by repelling them. In the Y Point Shop, you can redeem Y Points for a variety of rewards, including Skill Secrets, Extreme Soul Secrets, Exclusive Yokai, Dream Coins, and the new Holy Soul Secrets. In order to get Y Points, defeat enemies on the event map. Crystal Shogunyun provides a bonus during the event for Y Points. Event missions are available and feature rewards such as Y Points and Soul Secrets. The contribution leaderboard rewards vary by period, but taking a look at the first period, you can see that the top 70 players on each team will receive Crystal Shogunyun, an Extreme Soul Secrets, and a bunch of G3 coins and Y points. From 71 to 500 players will get Naga Raja and a variety of additional rewards. Beyond that, it's smaller but still valuable groups of rewards. When going for bells and contribution points, there are a variety of yokai with special bonuses. Hovernyan Awoken gives a bonus to contribution points during battle. Shirinji can pop bell boxes with his Sultimate. During capture stages, Crystal Shogunyun gives a very large bonus to hit points and attack. Hovernyan, Nagaraja, Shirinji, and Kapunki give a large bonus to hit points and attack. Fancinyan, Prancinyan, and Platinumoni give a bonus to hit points. Last Shogunyun, Princess Speech, QB Awoken, and Ashura give a bonus to attack. So, what do we do next, Robot Watch viewers? Well, since this is a scramble battle, the first thing we do after listening to Jibanyan S, Robanyan USA, and Crystal Shogun Banner is pick a team. The game selected Robanyan USA, or Shobanyan as we know him in Wibwab, for me, but I'm going Team Shogunyan all the way. The current contribution standings show up, so we might as well take a look at what this period's contribution rewards are. 
These are different from the leaderboard. You get these simply for earning contribution points, and they're unlocked as you pass each amount. It's the usual fare until 15,000 where we see Kapunki as an exclusive reward. Beyond that, it's the G1 coin all the way down at 30,000 contribution points. Before we tackle a single stage in the event, we're going to head straight for the event Gasha. It's time to see whether it's a lucky day or one of those lose all the Y points you spent months grinding kind of days. The last Shogunyun, Platinum Oni, and Princess Speech Passes are all available. Next, standing by himself in the SSS ranks, is Crystal Shogunyun. For SS ranks, we've got a bunch of the special capture stage yokai, including one of the only SS ranks I don't have. I'll have to crank for him later. The S ranks are headlined by Nagaraja and the normal Hubbernyan, then followed by a bunch of previous event yokai. There are all kinds of groovy A and B ranks, and... Ah, forget about it. Let's crank. Not bad, not bad. Three gold capsules is certainly better than I'm used to seeing in a 10 crank. We'll work our way around to the gold capsules through the muck of blue and red, and surprisingly, there's an SS rank, QB Awoken. Let's get to the heart of the matter, though. First gold capsule and... It's shaking. It's gonna be good. It's Crystal Shogunyun. I guess we know which kind of day it's gonna be. Crystal Shogunyun is a brave SS rank extreme all popper, like extreme Venok, although slightly different. His skill has a chance to reduce damage. Two more golds, but nothing new. Here we go again. Hey, look at that, even better, four golds and no blue. Wow, a second Crystal Shogunyun. Extremely lucky. Just not the yokai we're looking for. Alright, let's go again. Closer to the first hand crank, but you never know. Let's find out. Right off the bat, Red Capsule and... Nagaraja. Can you believe it? Nagaraja is a slippery S-rank popper and healer. And with that, we're done with the Gasha. Not bad, not bad at all. Just 13,500 Y points this time around. Let's head into the main event. It's actually been a really long time since we've had a scramble in Poonie. As I talked about at the beginning, contribution points through collecting bells is the main thing to focus on other than getting the new yokai through the Gasha and hidden in impossible stages. The first stage of the map has a mini tutorial of sorts. Basically, anytime you have a treasure box in one of these bubbles, you want to create a large puny and pop it next to the box. That will open up the box and give you the bell. Boxes and bells come in different sizes, and the bigger the bell, the more contribution points you get from it. In addition to the popping method, you can also pop the bubbles with sultimates, which is my preferred method. Note that I don't do that here because I spazzed out and completely forgot I was in fever. It's okay though, there are plenty of opportunities. The farther you get on the map, the larger the bubbles, boxes, and bells will be on average, so you'll get more points. I got two bells during that battle, which equates to 20 contribution points. Y points are also tied to how well you do during the battle, and I got five Y points, but Crystal Shogun the End's bonus made that 10 points total. Nothing to see in these early stages, so we'll zoom around the map until we can find something of interest. At stage 6, the map branches in two directions, and I'm headed up the odd stages, although there's no preferred path. At stage 11, we get our first glimpse of the rare encounter, Blips. To my knowledge, you can find him on any stage, but I can't be certain. After I feed him a little hamburger, he gives himself up on the first try. That's definitely what we like to see. The rest of the stage is a cinch, given these early stages have fairly easy enemies, and then we can check out our new recruit. 
Blips is a mysterious C rank all stunner. As we're moving up the map, we get an alert that one of the stages is under attack. There's nothing you have to do, but if you defend the stage by repelling the attackers, you'll get bonus contribution for that battle. The attacker will always be one of the yokai leaders of the other teams in the scramble. Note that a stage can't be attacked again until after it's been freed, so you can use this to your advantage by isolating attacks to the stages that give the most contribution near the bosses. Only the stages after the branching stage and before the bosses can be attacked. Here on stage 19, I run into blips again. It really is looking like a good event for me when I find the rare encounter twice without trying and twice befriend him. Now we're off to the first boss. Since I've chosen Shogunyan's team, the bosses we'll see here are the leaders from the other teams, the first of which is Robanyan USA. Our red, metal, and blue friend has almost 11,000 hit points and 227 attack. You can't befriend the bosses, but he's not going to pose too much of a threat either. Scramble battles, like many events, are about the exclusive event yokai, and those are always behind big obstacles like random chance in the gasha or really tough enemies. This guy? He's just an ordinary yokai, and Crystal Shogunyan's G Soulsmit does 450,000 damage, so we'll say a fond farewell to Robo USA. Defeating the boss opens up the capture stage where you can send out yokai to steal points from other teams. There's not much to it, just pick 5 yokai, send them out, and they'll come back with contribution. Just know that you can't use them while they're out there. Right now I'm most interested in opening up the hidden stage we passed up. I tried a number of things until ultimately being able to open it up. The hidden stage unlock conditions are potentially different by team for each period, so you might have to try out a bunch of things or find online sources to figure them out. In the case of stage 19 on Shogunyan during the first period, we're going to need to make a fairly large puny to make it happen. I've saved all of my Edison and popped away the others so that I can make one last big puny as I go into fever. I'll give Crystal Shogunyan the honors of disposing of it, and then we're off to see if we've done it. For this one, a size 22 puni does the trick and we've unlocked Hidden Stage 1, featuring Doki Doki Doki, a relative of Terrapada. The stage is restricted to brave, charming, slippery, and wicked tribes. It's a no-continue stage, and Doki Cubed has 13,000 hit points. According to his stats, he has zero attack. Weird. And according to his attack, he has zero attack. Fun bug. That officially makes this the easiest stage I've ever battled. The important question though, is does he want to join the team? That's one battle, one cheesy corn chips. There we go. Third time's the charm. Doki 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 is a tough B-rank popper. Now that we've done everything we can on this side of the map, we'll head back to the beginning and go through the even stages. Other than the rare encounter of blips, there aren't any new yokai on the basic stages, they're all contained in the hidden stages on the map. We're quickly to the boss, and this time it's Jibanyan S. For all intents and purposes, he's nearly identical to the other boss, but beyond his 11,000 hit points, he does have 350 attack, so a little more challenging. Eh, challenging, not challenging. Defeating the boss opens up the second hidden stage of the map, as well as the second capture stage. And here we are, Hidden Stage 2, the impossible stage. 
Hovernyan Awoken is tribe restricted to brave, charming, slippery, and wicked. It is most definitely a no-continue stage. Let's take a small detour and head to the point shop. The Y point shop has your usual assortment of previous event exclusive yokai, a lot of them, as well as some nifty books, coins, and exporbs. We're here for Shirinji though. Shirinji is a brave S-rank pauper. He's also one of the event ability yokai for the impossible stage. Back to the battle. Havernyan Awoken has 80,000 hit points and does 800 damage. That's a lot. I've brought all three event yokai to the party. Shirinji and Nagaraja for defense boost, and Crystal Shogunyan provides a damage boost. Even with the defense boosters, Havernyan still does 521 damage, which is no joke. That means we're going to have to save up some big puny to make sure we can launch Sultimates when we need to. Something cool happens next. Crystal Shogunyan's skill to sometimes raise defense comes into play and completely blocks Hovernyan's attack. We're going into fever, and this is when it gets wacky. Hovernyan counterattacks Soulsomans. Not only is he doing about 350 damage, but he's removing part of the fever gauge. Can Crystal Shogunyan one-shot him without boosters? Nope. And Hovernyan is not pleased. Second attempt. Knowing what we now know, I'm going to focus on just getting a booster and Crystal Shogunyan up. I'm a little slow, so by the time I get Blazion Awoken Sultimate off, the counterattack takes me out of fever. Still have a boost though, so what can Crystal Shogunyan do? Nice, just the right amount. And just the wrong amount of befriending. Probably because I forgot to feed him. Another try. Feeding him, and... Nope. Not that time either. Definitely not then. This is the one. Hovernyan Awoken is a brave, SS rank single attacker whose ultimate also slows down fever. To round up the last yokai, I farmed 15,000 contribution points. We'll head over to the scramble leaderboard and claim our contribution rewards. Kapunki is a brave, A rank single attacker. And that's it, we've done it. Let's go check out Crystal Shogunyan. There's a new menu item where you can see all the Crystal Legends. He's the only one currently available, but you can see a little bit about him. Additionally, you can see that just like the Extreme Yokai, there are bonuses depending on how many Crystal Legends you have. Crystal Shogunyan starts out with 387 hit points and 554 attack, but once he's maxed out at level 50, he's got a bountiful 682 hit points and 976 attack. Although his Sultimate is slightly different, he has the same 113 points of Sultimate value as Extreme Venok when his Sultimate is at level 7. Also like the Extreme Yokai, he's got a secondary G Sultimate. I'm not committed to using my Extreme Soul Secrets on him yet, but my expectation is that like Extreme Venok, he'll simply do even more damage if leveled up. His skill is to sometimes reduce the damage received. It isn't clear whether the percentage is how often he reduces or how much he reduces, but at skill level 5, it's a very impressive 70%. If you enjoyed the video, slash at the like button like Crystal Shogunyun. For all the latest Poonie Puni and Wibble Wobble information, subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitter. Until the next video, keep scrambling for those bells.